So I think this one is pretty relevant right now. And as the seasons in the UK are getting hotter and hotter, I think we need to broach this topic and take some tips from some of our destination wedding planner friends to actually just make sure that we're doing the right things. That's right guys, this week we are gonna be talking about hot wedding weather, what you should be doing as the couple, and also what you should be doing as guests as well to make sure that you don't end up in a bit of a pickle. Hello lovely couples and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, wedding planner and owner of Bluebird Creative and Bride Academy. I provide a weekly dose of wedding planning goodness for the modern couple as well as digital downloads. Here you will find so many wedding planning tips to help you on your planning journey so that you can plan your wedding like a pro as well as of course my digital downloads to help make that journey a little bit less stressful but anyway guys let's jump into all the tips and juicy goodness for the day let's talk about hot wedding weather let's go so guys i think it's really important to kind of split this week's video into two or these tips into two because it comes in two parts essentially as a guest there's certain things that you can do to make sure that you're coping on a wedding day when it's really blooming hot because over here in the UK now we are getting some incredible summers let's be honest and there are different factors that we need to be considering as a couple planning a wedding in the summer over here in the UK we also need to be taking certain steps and factoring in certain things just to make sure that we also don't end up in a pickle because it can really have an effect on certain parts of the day and your guests and we don't want grumpy guests we don't want sunburnt guests and we don't want guests with sunstroke heat stroke and all the things and we definitely don't want melted cakes no my friends so let's jump in and talk about the different things so let's start off with the guest side of things because i think there's a few less things that we need to consider as a guest when it's super hot so number one is to potentially bring your own bottle of water that might seem a bit odd but i mean I would just rather make sure that I'm super hydrated throughout the day. Hopefully your lovely friends that are getting married have considered that and that the catering and bar team are absolutely amazing. But I don't think there's any harm in bringing your own bottle of water just to make sure that you're sipping on throughout the day so you remain hydrated, especially when you're drinking and when it's hot. I just think it's a good shout. So do that. Number two is to make sure that you have put sun cream on. It is so easy to forget that, but it's really, really crucial that you get that sun cream on because if the weather's amazing, the likelihood is the drinks reception is going to be outside and you may find that your friends have even decided to have an outdoor wedding ceremony because that is becoming so much more popular over here in the UK. I'm here for that one too. So definitely make sure you've put sun cream on and pack sun cream in your bag as well because you're gonna need to top up. You might find that there's a cocktail hour later on in the day after the wedding breakfast that's outside. You might also find that the wedding breakfast is outside. It is becoming more and more of a thing over here in the UK as the summers get better and as the summers get hotter to have as much of your wedding outside as possible. So as guests, we've got to factor in sun cream, water, and also just considering what you're wearing. It's if it's a really, really hot day, you need to consider your outfits. You do not want to be a hot, sweaty mess. I mean, if you do, you do you, that's fine. But considering the materials of what you're wearing, obviously cottons and linens and lighter fabrics are going to make you feel a lot happier on the wedding day, as well as sort of looser dresses and jumpsuits and so on, as opposed to anything sort of that's a lycra or a nylon and that's super fitted and tight, because obviously, you gonna get sweaty. <laughs> and if you're a man, obviously jackets, you wanna be considering linen jackets, like lighter weight jackets, because anything heavier like tweed, don't do tweed on a summer's day. You will be so hot, my friend. You will be so hot. Waistcoats, all of those things, it's gonna make you sweat. So we kinda just wanna be considering that as you go and I know that you can't always plan the weather I mean you can never plan the weather let's be on this over here in the UK so you can't always factor that into your outfit but I just think we are getting hotter summers so just bear that one in mind so let's hop on over now to couples tips that you could use when planning your wedding in peak summer season and things that you need to be considering as you're planning and also in those final weeks when you're seeing the forecast and you've got a better idea of is it gonna be hot 
okay, these are the things that you need to be implementing and considering. So again, same as guests, water. You want to make sure that your waiting team and your bar team and you do not need to be thinking about this on the wedding day, but you need to just make a note and email them prior to say, looks like the wedding is going to be hot. Can we please make sure that there is water available for all guests throughout the whole day? You know, if you need to get in some bottles of water and have them placed around on the wedding tables, for example, you can do that. Most catering teams can just fill up jugs of water and have that replenished. But you want to make you want to highlight that. And make sure that it is easily accessible for your guests because that is absolutely key. Sun cream, again, on your side of things, you could put sun cream in the bathrooms. If you're thinking about doing toiletry baskets or anything like that, add sun cream into those baskets just to help those guests out that weren't prepared and didn't consider it. And then uh, having a bit of an oh whoops moment, you will be an absolute lifesaver and superstar just by popping that into those baskets for them. You can also consider fans perhaps for your ceremony, for perhaps for your drinks reception, at whichever point you're having outside, if you know that it's going to be really hot, then having fans available is just a really nice way to keep your guests cool. Also a really cute accessory, like putting out on the chairs prior to the ceremony. They actually look really sweet. They're not really expensive and they can just make your guests feel a little bit more comfortable. Particularly in ceremonies, there's not often shade available. And that's one of the things that we're going to come on to next. So just helping keep your guests cool is great. But let's move on to shade. So you need to be considering shade if you know that the wedding is going to be really hot. So do you need to move the drinks reception to a slightly different part of your venue, for example, because you know it's just got no shade? Do you need to be placing the bar underneath a tree that's got a bit of shade? Have you got any musicians that are playing during the drinks reception or the ceremony? They're going to need shade. They cannot stand out there in the beating hot sun, especially if they've got instruments. A lot of musicians will have strict sort of rules in place that they should make you aware of and requirements that they need when they're playing outside. So they typically need like a gazebo or like a big umbrella to protect their instruments, any sort of like wooden instruments, that's called percussion, isn't it? Um, Anything like that, they, they do have sort of particular requirements to ensure that their instruments don't get ruined essentially. So definitely bearing that in mind, but looking for shade, considering that when you're going through your planning in the final stages, do you need to make any amendments to make sure that people actually aren't just standing out for like an hour and a half to two hours in the beating hot sun? So just consider that. Also having some seating available because obviously when it's really, really hot, it can make you feel a little bit more lethargic. People may want to sit down, that kind of thing. So just considering, have you thought about that? And if so, at what parts could you do that? If it's a case of moving some seating from the ceremony, it's not ideal logistically, but actually if it makes your guests happy, then I always say go with that. You know, having happy guests and having guests remember your day for the right reasons is definitely uh, is definitely a winner. One of the next things to consider, and I mentioned it in the intro, is cake. So if you are having, for example, a buttercream cake, there was actually, I saw a reel very recently where a cake maker had done a time lapse, popped a cake out in like 21 degree heat, and literally within half an hour, all the buttercream had melted off the cake. It was insane. So this is something that really, really needs to be considered. Cake not going out too early, being kept in a fridge, making sure that there is space and available available space in a fridge for the cake to sit making sure that the cake isn't delivered too early if need be and only set up just before the cake cutting if you are getting married and you know it's going to be hot in advance for example if it's a destination wedding maybe not having a buttercream cake doing something different you know when you are getting married in Italy, you'll see that a lot of people don't have cakes. They'll do champagne towers, they will do pavlovas, they will do croquant bouche, lots of different things because the heat obviously has quite a big impact on that. But over here, you may have booked your cake in advance, you may be really excited about your cake, so therefore you just need to consider how logistically that cake is not going to melt do you cut the cake earlier in the day to avoid it melting or getting sort of you know distorted or anything like that so things to consider there just to ensure that the cake is how you actually ordered it and not a melted mess 
Something else that you want to consider is the timings of your day. Now, the likelihood is that you will have booked your ceremony, you can't move your ceremony time, but having things later in the day when it's hot obviously means that you're not going to have the beating sun down on your head. So if you are getting married in the middle of peak summer over here, perhaps you want to consider having a slightly later ceremony so that guests aren't sat outside in the super, super hot heat. Have you got a late license at the venue? That means that you can start later and finish later. For example, in Spain or in Europe, weddings are always typically later because of the heat, the midday heat. My sister's getting married in Spain next year. Her wedding ceremony is going to be at sort of five o'clock, but the wedding can go on till 3 a.m. And obviously that's slightly different over there to what it is over here, but you get my drift, okay? You get the idea. So just considering those timings or having a plan B for, okay, it really is like 30 degree heat outside, it's so hot. Is there actually somewhere inside that's cooler that we can hold the drinks reception because actually people are just finding it too much? So those sorts of things need to come in play. I think we always have a plan B in place for wet weather, but actually hot weather brings its own kind of risks and logistics as well. And we definitely need to consider it. And as the summers are getting hotter and nicer and lovelier over here in the UK, I think it's definitely something that we just need to be considering and thinking about when we're planning, especially in those final weeks as we're seeing what the weather's going to be like. Totally here for the hot weather over here in the UK. I love outdoor ceremonies. I love it when weddings are all outside. It's my absolute favourite, but you definitely just need to consider some of those factors. So anyway, guys, I hope you found today's video helpful. As always, make sure that you have subscribed to my channel for weekly goodness with me. And if you're not already, then come and join me over on Instagram at Bluebird Creative and also at Bluebird Bride Academy. So over here we are showing our real raw weddings and lots of the behind the scenes of just running the business and Bluebird Bride Academy is where you'll find lots more tips, info on our digital downloads and how we can help you plan your wedding. Have an amazing week, guys. I will be back next week with some more wedding planning goodness. Until then, see you later.